everybody, my name is Remy Zakin and I've been a professional actor for over 20 years now and I wanted to revive this channel because I've been thinking a lot lately about all of my acting experiences, some of the, the good, the really bad, the really, really strange. So subscribe to this channel and like this video if you wanna see more of this kind of content. Um, I was asking people on Instagram what they wanted to see from me, um, I was really curious. And someone asked, how do I take care of my voice um, and keep my voice in good shape? And I, I just wanna say straight off the bat that I've had a lot of vocal issues and um, I'm not a doctor, I am not a voice teacher. Even though I've worked with a ton of voice teachers, I still have basically no idea about vocal pedagogy. So I'm actually not gonna talk about that at all because that is not um, my area of expertise. And I highly, highly encourage you to find somebody in your area or now, I mean, with Skype and Zoom, you can find, you can work with an amazing voice teacher in New York, uh, even if you don't live in New York. And I'm gonna leave my recommendation in um, the show notes of this, um, in the notes of this video. But anyway, I'm gonna talk about the five factors that I think about when I am trying to maintain my voice. So factor number one, which is the most important for me personally, is posture. So um, for me, I have a lot of tension in my body. I think we all do, basically. Um, but I carry a lot of tension in my neck, um, especially like my traps and my levator scapulae and my um, scalenes and everything. And just all of this musculature, of course, also this as well. Um, especially because I had headgear as a kid. Oh my gosh, what a nightmare. Um, and I have very tight hips, um, really tight psoas muscles. And so um, you, I just really truly believe for me at least, if I am not feeling like flexible in my hips, if my neck is really tight, I'm just not gonna be able to, to hit the notes that I wanna hit. Um, I have had the privilege of working with a ton of elite voice teachers um, in New York, some of them including Joan Later, um, uh, Matt Farnsworth, Katie Agresta, Andrea Green, Andrew Byrne, every one of them had Liz Kaplan. Um, they all had great ideas for me and everybody said something a little bit different, but all of them have a common thread of for me, I need to be doing yoga, I need to be, um, just making sure that I'm not carrying that kind of tension in my jaw, in my neck, in my hips. Um, so if, it really depends on what kind of role it is, but honestly, acting, you know, musical theater especially is so physical usually um, that it's really important to be, you know, in good shape. As I realize that my back, like I'm not having good posture while making this video. Um, the second factor that I like to think about when it comes to taking care of my voice personally is diet. So I struggled for a long time with acid reflux, um, primarily because of all of the antibiotics that I took as a kid. Yeah, for me, I struggled with acid reflux. Um, anytime I ate gluten, dairy, um, I was having a hard time with chocolate, uh, anything acidic like tomatoes. Um, and for that was a health journey that I had to work on a lot and I finally feel like I'm on the other side and um, I might make a video about that in the future because I know a lot of people struggle with acid reflux. But yeah, I mean, if you're gonna eat a huge dinner before, you know, after a show, you're eating a big snack and you go right to sleep, you're gonna reflux um, and that's gonna burn your cords overnight. Um, and uh, so that's just not gonna be helpful for, for singing. I also am just not the kind of person who can drink alcohol when I'm on a contract. Um, for some reason, alcohol just really um, dries me out. I think it dries everybody out, but especially me, and I find the next day I wake up and my voice is down here, and that's just not helpful because most of the roles that I play, I am, you know, very belty and, you know, need to have a lot of, um, I, I need to make sure that my chords are not inflamed to, to hit those notes. So um, diet is definitely important. And that's something that is specific to everybody. I mean, I have celiac, so I personally cannot eat gluten. Um, I find that dairy makes me a little phlegmy, so I try to avoid that on contracts. I don't wanna be, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, deprive myself 
Um, but there are just some things that I can't have if I'm trying to hit certain notes, but I'll happily eat a block of cheese when I'm not uh, doing a show. So diet, really, really important. And again, that's individual to everybody. And I am not a doctor. So you have to, you know, work with a, a doctor or a nutritionist on that and figure out like, what are your triggers? Um, it's different for everybody. Um, next is water. I, you know, water is really important. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I feel like a lot of people overdo it with the water. Um, it is very common whenever you do a reading or a concert, there's always free water bottles, which is really, really nice um, because you do want to be hydrated. But um, the issue with that is that people drink a lot of water and then you start to dehydrate yourself. So I just feel like making sure that you're drinking a little bit of water all day versus chugging a liter of water before you do a show um, will really help. Also, you don't want to drink a liter of water before a show because then you're spending all of your time off stage peeing. Um, and that's really distracting when you're on stage and you're like, oh my God, I have to pee again. So do not recommend. Um, again, that's different for everybody too, of like how much water you need to drink. Um, you know, obviously if you're someone who drinks coffee, you're going to need more water. If you're someone who drinks, um, soda, you're going to need more water. Uh, so definitely make sure that you're hydrated. And for me, it takes me, um, a couple hours to feel really hydrated. So I like to start off my morning, right? With some water and then kind of steadily throughout the day. Um, the next one is sleep. Obviously sleep is king. Sleep is king. You can't cut corners on sleep. Um, I, trust me, I've tried. Um, you know, when I was doing spring awakening, I thought I was invincible and I was staying up until like two in the morning and then sleeping until two in the afternoon. Do not recommend. That's not the way, even though I was getting 12 hours of sleep, it wasn't quality sleep. Um, so definitely, um, making sure to get a good seven, eight to nine hours is really important because your, your vocal folds are muscles or if, if they're not, and I'm wrong on that, then they are related to muscles. So, uh, you definitely want to not, not feel fatigued. It's hard though, when you're doing, um, a contract and you don't get home until 10 30 or 11 PM at night. And then you want to have a little bit of snack and then you want to wind down and it's just like, ah, then you've got the acid reflux and then you're not sleeping well. And so um, that's definitely something to keep in mind as well. All right, last factor for me was something that was a game changer. I know it's not gonna sound very unusual to a lot of people, but a neti pot really, really helped me um, when I was doing uh, Spelling Bee at Kate Playhouse and I was playing Alva Ostrovsky, I have to hit like a, an F or a G, I can't even remember. It's just a very, very high note. And in order for me to hit that note consistently, I just had to neti pot every, before every show. Um, and it did burn a little bit because I think I had the salt ratio off, but it really shouldn't burn. It should be pretty painless. Um, make sure that you're using distilled water and not tap water because you don't want to like accidentally have like a flesh eating bacteria in your water. I, I read that crazy story and I was like, only distilled water for me. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I have it. I had a deviated septum actually at the time. I knew about it since I was in spring awakening and I never got it fixed because I was always so worried about, oh, surgery and like, is it going to change my voice and everything? And honestly, um, it changed my life. I highly recommend getting your deviated septum fixed by a board certified, a double board certified uh, um, surgeon, um, someone who is board certified in otolaryngology and also board certified in uh, plastic surgery, even if you're not going to go the plastic surgery route, which I did not, uh, but it's just helpful for someone to know how to like, you know, cut into a nose and make it look okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it really helped my breathing. It really helped um, my stuffed up kind of feeling and sound. Um, I sleep better, I sleep through the night. Um, so I definitely recommend um, getting a deviated septum fixed, just not only for an acting career, but just for life. Um, and I think that the neti pot was just, um, you know, clearing out any blockage that I had there that, you know, when I, got my deviated septum fixed, it also cleared that out as well. 
Um, yeah, so those are my five tips on what to think about when you're taking care of your voice. Um, I was talking to my husband who is a music director and he was like, those are not the five factors that I would be thinking about at all. And I was like, okay, well then I guess I'm gonna have to interview you for this channel and get a music director's opinion. Um, he was like, number one, when you're taking care of your voice, don't sing anything that you can't actually sing. Like know your limits. I was like, okay, sure, fair. I'm assuming that people already know their limits, um, but this is just for how you, you know, take care of your voice on a day to day. It's very much how you take care of your body on a day to day. It's kind of like a holistic way of thinking. Like if you don't have good posture and you're sticking your head out like this, I feel like a lot of actors, and I'm just gonna go on a small tangent for a second, but I feel like a lot of actors, when they act, they want so desperately to connect with another person that they tend to start to like stick their necks out. And I am someone who is very, very guilty of this. I think if you'll look at any of the press materials for Spring Awakening, if you look at me from the side, you will notice that my head is like this. Um, so, you know, that is really, really important to, and that's why I think um, I had um, polyps on my vocal cords while I was doing Spring Awakening. That'll be another video, but, um, you know, I just think that um, alignment is just like the number one, especially for me. Um, if you're not in alignment, no matter how you sing, like it's gonna cause tension, it's gonna cause problems. So yeah, those are my thoughts. So um, again, um, subscribe to this channel, like this video for more. Um, I'm gonna be releasing more um, of my old self tapes. I realized I deleted a lot of them, which is kind of a bummer because some of them are so cringy. I am so, so, so bad. And I kind of wanted to share that with people um, to show you like, yeah, professional actors can be really, really bad. Um, and book, do not book a lot of the time. So um, the Dear Evan Hansen one that I already shared was something I was really proud of. Uh, but that is not normal. <laughs> I, I personally have had a lot of mental blocks with self tapes and everything. So I just think that'd be interesting to share. And I have a lot of audition logs um, that I wanted to talk about, just like funny audition stories, weird audition stories, um, and just like general tips, tricks, um, thoughts of someone who's been in the business for over 20 years and didn't go to school for it, um, you know, kind of learned on the job training sort of situation. So yeah. Alrighty, see you around. Bye.